Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to New Life Health Ministries. I'm Josh. I've already said that. thought I'd say it again, 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 again. I don't know why, but again is a fun word today. But, I'm done. I'm going to start this asking a question for you all to kind of ponder. Keep it in your head. Think of your first answer. Keep it there. If you had superpowers, what would you actually do with them? Like, really think about it. The first of your power pops in your head, what do you think you would do with it? Keep that there. I'm going to get back to it near the end of the video. What we're talking about today, we're going back to the Gospels, talking about how to read the Gospels. I'm going to give you an example, talking about the story of the talents. The story of the talents goes something like this. Jesus is telling the story, and he says, Hey, there was once a guy, he had a bunch of slaves, he got three, and was like, Yo, give you all some talents. He went away, he came back, two of the slaves doubled how much they had, one of them was like, hey, look, I know you're scary, so I hid this, I'm going to give it back to you, I know you're a harsh guy, please be easy on me, this is why I didn't lose it, I kept it, it's all good now, right? And the guy was like, no, I went out, but did you do something with this? You did nothing. Punishment. Two different versions of this story. It's in only in two of the Gospels, it's in Matthew 25 and it's in Luke 19. In Matthew, the guy is going out on an adventure, and he gives one servant five, he gives one servant two, and he gives one servant one talent. And the one with five doubles, one with two doubles, one with one, just keeps the ones like, yo, hey, I know you're harsh. And Jesus says, hey, this guy, he's going to go to a place of gnashing of teeth. Saying that the person who is content, the person who is lazy, the person who just hid his talent, judgment is all that awaits him. The people who take what they have and make more of it, more is given to more. He says he takes the one talent from the guy who did nothing with it, and he gives it to the person who took the five and doubled it, so the guy with ten. And it's usually, we think of uh, Jesus usually does the whole, you know, rich is poor, poor is rich kind of thing. But in this case, it's the opposite. Why? It's because it's not about the amount they have, it's about what they did with it. You get into some different types of interpretations of what you can do with that idea. Um, we'll get into that in, in the blog post. It's joshuanoel.net. I'll put it here. Joshuanoel.net. Do -do 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 -do. But, um, <laughs> doodly doodly do. In Luke, the story's a little bit different. The guy is going out to claim a kingdom and he gets three people talent doesn't say how many just says he gives them some talent he leaves two of them double it one of them doesn't do anything with it and the guy doesn't do anything he's like yo hey I know you're a harsh man and the guy's like yeah heck right I'm a harsh man in fact I'm going to prove it by punishing you in front of everyone for your laziness now that whole idea of the guy going out to claim his kingdom isn't found in Matthew and then we have two so we have this story now let's see the story in a story but remember, when we talk about a parable from Jesus, we're talking about a story and a story and a book and a book and a book. So we see the story. Now let's look at the stories that it's in. In Matthew, Jesus is telling a bunch of stories about salvation. He's talking about faithfulness. So this story is a story of faithfulness. Are you going to be faithful with what Christ gave you? Are you going to make more of it, or are you just going to sit on it? Sit on your butt and not do anything with it. It's about faithfulness. In Luke, Jesus is still in Zacchaeus' house. Zacchaeus is a guy, Jesus walked in town, some little short dudes, like, yo, I'm a tax collector. He's hiding in a tree, trying to see Jesus. And he's like, hey, you, go into your house. And when Jesus went to the, Jesus came to the guy, and the guy went, you know what? Ah, oh, Jesus is here. I'm going to be generous. I'm going to start giving all my money back. I'm never going to wrong someone again. I'm going to make amends for all the wrongs I have done with, with my money. And he sees Jesus, and he was transformed to become generous. And while Jesus is in this guy's house, the guy that everybody hated, who's just transformed into being generous, Jesus is like, hey, let me tell you this story. So he's in the house. And he even says that the reason Jesus is telling it, Luke says the reason Jesus tells this story is because he's like, yeah, I can tell some of you think that because I'm here, the kingdom will be here. But there's going to be a time of waiting. The guy in Luke's version is a guy who went to get a kingdom. And there was a time before he came back. Don't want you to get confused. In Matthew, it seems almost certain Jesus is talking about himself going and then coming back. In Luke... He seems to be talking about um, Herod's son, a guy who went out to get part of the kingdom from Herod, and he came back and he gave land to his servants. Um, the reason we think this in Luke is because Luke is writing to a Roman, and the story parallels a historic figure at that time. You have to understand the historical context as well. So then you see the story in a story. So in Matthew, we're talking about faithfulness. In Luke, we're talking about being generosity. What are you going to, Matthew, it's what are you going to do with what God gave you and invest in yourself? And Luke, it's how are you going to use what God gave you to help others, to invest into others? 
So you still have investment, still the thing. It's a little bit faithfulness, generosity. Okay. So we see the two books. We see that it's because, so it's a story and a story. And then we see the reason it's faithfulness to Matthew is because he's writing to the Jews. And the Jews have a more religious aspect and he's appealing to that. And he's trying to teach them the ways of Jesus in context of their religion. Luke is writing to a Roman. He's explaining to him in terms that the Roman won't understand. Why is the man a man to be feared? Because he's talking about Herod's son. This is a man to be feared. The guy's fear that this guy will come back in judgment is rightfully so. In fact, the guy, when he comes back in the parable, says, Hey, you were right to fear me. Let me punish you in front of everybody. He says, You were right to fear me. Keep that. So in Luke, to a Roman. Matthew's to the Jew. Both of them are part of the New Testament. Why is that important? The Old Testament is about what we can't do. We are bound in the law and we can't do certain things. The New Testament is we are free in Christ so that we can, in fact, we are ordered to go, to go do things now. It is, in, it is for freedom, he said, it's free. It's Galatians 5.1, one of my favorite Bible verses. And um, what this means is that we are free to go do faithfulness and invest into ourselves. We are free to go be generous and invest into others. So we see that in context of the old and new, which is in context of the whole Bible. So we see it. It's a story and a story, and a book and a book and a book. How do we get meaning out of each individual story? What are we looking at? So we see in Matthew very clear, be faithful. And to be faithful doesn't mean just to hold on to what God gave you. It means to go invest more and become more of it. And Luke, he's talking about being generous and go invest into others. And the thing is, it's a key that this guy was right to fear the man. He was right. This guy was a fearful dude. He went and punished him in front of everyone. He said, you're right. Fear me. You should have feared me. And Luke, that's key, because we can't let our fear, even justified fear, prevent us from being generous, because that's what Christ called us to be. So we see these messages. We see them in their context. We see them in the historical context. And I want to read to you a quote from the Oxford Commentary on Luke. It says, Disciples must risk all for the kingdom, and not let its gifts come to nothing, either by acquiescing in the present, or despairing in his future. And we can't be content with where we are presently. And we can't despair. We can't be scared of what's going to come in the future. But we have to do something with the gifts that God gave us. You have to invest your love, your joy, your peace, your gentleness, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, meekness, self-control. You have to invest all of these things into yourself, into the world. Keep practicing it into yourself and making yourself better. Keep giving unto others and making the world a better place. Be salt and light in the world. Because that's what Christ commanded us to do. And contentment, laziness, is going to be judged. In Matthew, the guy goes to a place of gnashing the teeth of hellfire. In Luke, this guy is punished in front of everyone. Because contentment is not allowed in the kingdom of Christ. That's the context in the Bible. What's the context in our lives? What do we, when we look at our lives, what does this say? Go back. What do you think you would do with superpowers? Keep that in your mind. We're just about to get there. Captain America verse... Iron Man. It's going to be in the next movie, Captain America Civil War. It's going to be awesome. Superman vs. Batman. Another movie coming out. And we've had these comics. We've had these cartoon shows for years. I'm like, yeah. And we all think, like, yeah. And us nerds are like, this is a great fight. Classic fight. A guy with slightly more than average strength up against a human tank. Great fight. It shouldn't be, though. But there's no reason we should be able to suspend our belief to believe that. A normal man with some ninja skills... Reverse, someone who might as well be a god because he's invincible. And we're like, yeah, yeah, great fight. Why? Because Captain America, the guy with slightly more than average strength, he invested what he had into himself and he practiced it. He honed in his skills to the point that we believe this guy can take on a human tank. Because Iron Man, he built a suit. Okay. Captain America, he's had years of training. He knows how to use his talents to the best of his ability. Batman, dude, if there was ever a guy who invested into himself and learned how to be a hero, it was Batman. Superman never invested himself. He was naturally invincible. That's why we can suspend our disbelief and say, yeah, great fights to these things that should be utter blowouts. And yeah, they're not real, but they're great examples because that's how we think. Spider-Man, the guy at the power of a bug, we believe he can go on, take alien monsters out, and fight like rhinoceros men, and men with bombs flying around in super suits, and gliders, and we're like, yeah, this guy can take on the world, he can take on whole mob gangs. 
His power is to be like a spider. It's not impressive. In fact, if you read the comic books, usually he wins because the bad guys get so tired from punching him that they give up. Because he isn't the winner. He's not the guy who's like super strong and just beating people. He wills himself through. In fact, there's a comic book where Mephisto, who's basically Marvel's Satan, is like, yeah, we, we don't want him in hell. Because this guy has so much will, he would just destroy it just to get back to Mary Jane. His girlfriend, his wife at that point, actually. Because Spider-Man has so much will. He is so much invested into other people that it's like, yeah, we can believe that the guy with the bug power can do all this. That's why Ant-Man sounds silly to us. Spider-Man, yeah, that's normal. That's awesome. Yeah, guys, that's because Spider-Man is a character who knows how to invest his talents. So what about us? I don't know what you originally thought, but I always had kind of had this bit. And I thought it was funny, but I think it's true, too. If I had the power of the Force, I'd be like, yo, boom, open fridge, get my diet soda. Mm, turkey comes to me. If I could fly, I'd probably just never walk again. I'd be fat. If I had spider powers, back to that fridge, right? I mean, if we had the Force, it wouldn't be, the new movie wouldn't be The Force Awakens. It would probably be The Force Hits the Snooze Button. That would be the name of the movie. Because we are lazy people. We don't do much with our powers now, our talents now. What makes us think if we had more, we'd do more? Really think about that. I, I know that's like, I thought that was going to be funny. It is funny. I mean, it's hilarious. We'd all sit on our butts and do nothing. Ha ha, funny. But it's also sad. Because it's true. And the thing is, at the end of the day, we do have superpowers. Each and every one of us had the power to be generous to the point that someone... So it doesn't have anything with, uh, wow, you just made, you have the superpower to make someone's day with generosity. You have the superpower to hone in your skills, whatever they may be, whether they're book smart, you're good at art, music, whatever. You have the ability to hone that in to the point that you can change the world. Every one of us have this ability, but we don't invest into ourselves. We don't invest into others. Because we have superpowers, we just use them to be lazy. Most intelligent people barely get by through school and do bad in college because we use our superpower of being intelligent to be lazy and not have to study. The thing is, a lot of us have a lot of talents and a lot we can do, but we choose to do nothing with them. I think the same thing would happen if we had the powers. And I know it's, ah, whatever, I just took something funny and made it serious and ruined it. But listen, I want you to think about it. In fact, I want you to stop and pray. This Christmas season, start now. Make someone's year. Make someone's day. Go use your superpower of generosity. Go use your superpower of kindness, of love, of joy, gentleness, goodness, kindness, meekness, faithfulness, long-suffering, whatever it may be. Use your superpowers that God gave you, the gifts of the kingdom, not to be content, because contentment will be judged, but instead to go invest into yourself, hone in your own skills, and invest into others. Go. Practice these things. Pray about these things. And have a merry, holly jolly Christmas and all that good stuff. Talk to you again next week. Follow me on the blog at joshuanoll.net or on my YouTube page, which is just Joshua Noll. See ya. This will be a sign to you A baby born in Bethlehem Come and worship Do not be afraid
Let every 